知道。the depths of space is back on earth and now he's looking to save the world from the fourth world foundation sure he had help from a number before but she's not helping him this time he's got to face it on his own look at these four people he's coming for a villain known as adonis he'll do it you'll be there back it now first man to learn it Good morning, everybody. I'm back. Hello. How's everybody doing today on this fine, fine day? I'm doing good. I hope you are as well. Whoa, let's do this. Uh, there we go. Better definition for the camera. Everybody wants to see this gloriousness and high definition. Hello, Devil Flyer. Look at that. 1.53 a.m. Devil Flyer's like, what's up? Uh, I think, I think you're West Coast. So if you're West Coast, that was actually almost 5 a.m. my time you did that. Uh, I was not up till 5.30. What's good, JP Roca? Hello. Love your avatar, by the way. Green Lantern's awesome. Really dug that Liam Sharp run. Uh, good morning, Damofino. Uh, coffee sketch, best way to start the day. I agree. Juan, hello to you as well, my friend. Thank you for joining. Uh, today's show, uh, I thought I would do, oh, and by the way, uh, yesterday I uploaded a, a video review flip through of how to draw comics with Dick Giordano. Dick Giordano is a famous, uh, American comic book artist. He passed away a few years back, but he had a long 
uh, career in the industry, mostly known as an inker. He was also editor in chief, I believe, at DC Comics for a while, uh, uh, maybe even a vice president for a while there. I was lucky enough to meet Mr. Giordano uh, in the early days when I got into the business at DC. Never had a chance for him to ink my work, however. That would have been a huge thrill as I love his inks. Um, man, when he inked guys like Mike Sikowski, Dick Dillon, Don Heck, uh, John Buscema on a few issues of Conan, you could tell his inking style, uh, very influential in the business as an inker. Uh, you could see guys like Joe Rubenstein, Klaus Jansen, uh, have some of their style attributed to Dick's work. Uh, Dick worked with Neil Adams for a while in Continuity Studios. Uh, just uh, beautiful work. Penciled comics as well. Did some great Batman stories, some great Green Lantern uh, stories as well. So I posted that book, uh, flip through review with the link to Amazon if you'd like to buy it. So check that out in my videos. Uh, I uploaded a short two-minute video on Monday. Uh, during football on Sunday, I did a quick iPad sketch of the Hulk, and I tried to do him more in that classic Kirby-style proportion uh, when he created the character. So check that out as well. That'll take a whole two minutes out of your life to see a time-lapse video of my uh, sketching the Hulk. Hopefully, I'll get back to it and finish it. Uh, today... I thought we would look at some of my pencils for X-Men Forever, issue 14, and then tomorrow we'll look at issue 15. I got to work with the fantastic, legendary Chris Claremont on this book, and uh, I remember when I was talking to the editor about getting the job, he was like, uh, now just to let you know, Chris Claremont works plot style, old school Marvel plot style. He doesn't work full script. Is that something you're comfortable with? And I, I chuckled to myself in the way that I do, <laughs> young man. And I say that because I believe, if I remember correctly, the editor was a little bit younger than me. Uh, AJ is here. Relax, first fam. AJ's here. Hello. Um, just saying how I worked with Chris Claremont on these couple issues of uh, X-Men Forever and the editor saying, you know, he writes in a... Uh, plot style. And if I ever worked that way and my chuckling, <laughs> young editor O, and I believe the editor was a little bit younger than me, so not a lot, but he definitely wasn't working at Marvel when I started working there back in 1992. So I said, of course I had my first work at Marvel was plot style. So uh, no worries, buddy. I did go to the Kubert school and we were learned all the fine aspects of storytelling. So without further ado, I'm actually going to show in this split screen some of Chris Claremont's plot. So you're going plot style. What the hell does that mean? Well, full script is a panel by panel breakdown. So here you see page one. Let me zoom in on this. Um, so here you see plot style page one. Look at that. There's no panel breakdowns. It's just the text of what's happening on the page. So I'll give it a, a brief read through for you here. So page one, the sun rises over the nation of Wakanda. A day has passed since perfect storm brought her forces to Genosha to confront the ghost panther. As the sun gleams off the golden statue of perfect storm in front of the palace, it gives no hint of the fact that perfect storm was dealt a powerful blow by Genosha's secret protectors. We zoom past the palace to a small royal airfield not too far away from the main grounds. One of Wakanda's royal transport shuttles is approaching, and they claim to have prisoners aboard. Oh, that's exciting. Hello. Uh, it's Travico. Thought about you yesterday since you like art books. Picked up How to Animate Film Cartoons by Preston Blair at Goodwill for 50 cents. Holy crap, that's a great deal. Uh, I have that book. Hey, pop culture, how are you? Um, I have that book. Hold on. Uh, is it this one? Uh, is it this one by any chance? Or is it the thin one? This is the thick one. See how thick that bad boy is? Look at that. 
This book is a whopping 224 pages. It talks about the cartoon storyboard. It has motion. You know what? I'll have to do a flip through of this book as well. Even if you're just drawing comic books, uh, seriously though, even if you're just wanting to draw comic books, this is a great book to have because it goes into uh, exaggeration of the form and balance and tilt and movement. Uh, oh, you know what? I believe this is the one here. I'm going to solo screen it. Is that the one you picked up? How to animate film cartoons right there as it shows. That's probably the one you picked up. Um, that book is has principles from this book in it. Like this book, they basically took and broke down into a few of those thin Walter Foster books. So this is the book you want to search for because this has everything those do. And it's probably just as cheap. So, yeah, you know what? I will have to do a flip through of this book because this book is awesome. So I'm glad you brought that up, buddy. All right, let's get back to this. So uh, if this was a full script, this page one would have broken it down into panels, as in panel one, draw this, panel two, draw this. Oh, I know which one you're talking about, but please tweet it over. Um, so this one... So this would have been panel one, this panel two, this panel three, this blah, blah, blah. So then you look at what I drew and I broke it down and I thought, Ooh, let's be a little cinematic here. Shall we? I could have done this first panel. Technically this is one drawing right here over the course of three panels. And you're like, well, why would you do something like that? You silly goose. I'm going to tell you because I like to be informative and teach things. By breaking this one scene into three panels, it gives you the sense of panning a, the camera doing a nice subtle pan from left to right across the landscape. So if you saw this in a movie, panel the screen would just show this mountain range with some trees, long shot, and then it would pan to the right. As we go across the mountain scene and a little bit of the city comes in of Wakanda. And as we pan some more over, we see more of the city and the sun rising over the mountains. So I thought a little cinematic instead of doing just one big panel showing that. I figured let's break it into three and show the movement of the camera panning across. And then we zoom in. The camera cuts to the big shot. Of the perfect storm statue, uh, where of course I get to draw a nice sexy shot of uh, storm because that's what the statue was just a pretty shot of storm. They sent me reference on, um, I think it was colored gold in the comics, if I remember correctly. And uh, she's just looking, looking fine, uh, on it, but once again, always wanting to lead the eye around the page we've got the main focus up here on her and look at that her arm points us right to the ship because remember then it said we cut to on the outskirts of the city a small airfield so i indicated the small airfield here with this transport ship coming in to a landing so once again wanting to try to move the eye around the page and give the reader a sense of movement in these still images i have the ship over here in the left hand side and then as your eye travels down it arcs down the camera spins around a little more to a side view as the ship is coming in for a landing and then you know you've got the little effect on the ground from you know, the air being blown around and stuff. Thank you. Frankie wants to know, uh, was Chris Claremont a cool guy? You know, the only time I ever actually interacted with, uh, oh, what is my wife saying? Look at my wife giving me crap. Uh, I did have, look, I'm texting my wife. I know, but you know,
just sent her a text. So anyhow, I, I only talked to Chris once. It was on Facebook Messenger. I sent him a private message saying, it's an honor to work with you. Uh, I've been a fan of your work since I was a kid. And uh, AJ, I will tell Helen, you said hi. Here's the funny thing. So we buy these this bulk box of yogurts, Greek yogurt, and we only had a few left. And in the bulk box, it's an 18 pack. So there's six blueberries, six cherry, six strawberry, right? So there's three left in the fridge inside the house. We also have a refrigerator in our garage. I know you're saying, I don't give a shit about this, Smith. Keep talking about comics, but it's my show. Um, so I grabbed the blueberry because she doesn't like blueberries. So she's like, try not to eat all the other flavors, blah, blah, blah. So she sends me a text saying, you could have had a blueberry yogurt since there was only one of the other ones. You know, I don't like blueberries. So I wrote her back in my nice way and said, I did have a blueberry yogurt this morning. And she goes, what happened to the last cherry one? Look at that. Texting me back. I don't know. So she texts me back. Uh, what happened to the last cherry one? And I texted back, I don't know. Because I don't know. Um, pop culture, all oh, you care. Um, so anyhow, getting back to the story. So Claremont wrote me back and said, you know, thank you basically for the kind words. But here's the nice compliment he said. He said that my rendition of the X-Men in this, in this, uh, these two issues is exactly what, uh, he pictured in his head. He said, my rendition of the X-Men, let's, Helen doesn't watch the show. <laughs> no, she does not. She's a little jealous of Christine. I mean, can you blame her? Um, a buddy and I met Claremont outside of Heroes Con in 2017 or 18. Didn't realize it was him until after we figured out we'd given him bad directions. Oh, damn. Way to troll Claremont. Um, so anyhow, yeah, he said that my rendition of the X-Men is exactly what he pictures in his head. And he liked the work I did. So that was awesome. So now we go to page two of the story. And uh, let's see what was written for page two. Uh, we just thought it was some nice older fella at first. And now we tried to get the greatest X-Men writer lost. I know. Uh, page two says the shuttle lands, a small battalion of Royal Guards and the Dora Meluge. Uh, exit the craft. Um, there are the same guards that Perfect Storm left behind when she fled Genosha at the end of issue 12. They're escorting two prisoners, the Ghost Panther and Roe, who are shackled. We, we, we really want to make this look legitimate, as if the Wakandan warriors somehow rallied and won the battle against the X-Men that started in issues 12 and 13. Uh, let's see. That's a huge compliment coming from Claremont. Oh, dude, trust me. I was on cloud nine for the rest of that day. But throughout the scene, all the Wakanda guards from the plane should be silent and should have blanket facial expressions. The guards are met by members of the airfield who are thrilled with their countrymen, that their countrymen have returned safely home. The crew chief says that he will alert the queen immediately about their prisoners. Ghost, Pan Ghost Panther looks up and says, you will do no such thing. Once again, no panel breakdowns here. It's totally up to me. So I said, all right, let's rock this. You got the back of the ship opening up. I did a long shot to show the Dora Meluge, Meluge, I never pronounced that right, walking out of the ship. Uh, we don't see the prisoners yet. We only see a hint of them. And then boom, nice big establishing panel here, looking down on the scene. Uh, these pencils are so clean, by the way, because I light boxed all this stuff from roughs that I did on other paper. So we look down on the scene as we see, oh. It's Ghost Panther and Roe shackled with the guards. Dun, dun, dun. We got the crew chiefs running up. Yay, you're back. Yay. Blank expressions on their faces like the script said. Ghost Panther focus right here. Uh, let's see. Wow, that's high praise when you think of the legends he's worked with. Bill Sinkevis, John Byrne, Art Adams, Cochran, Wycheck, Frank Miller, Remittis, Paul Smith, and Andy Smith. It is such, like I said, I was on cloud nine for the rest of the day. 
the guards come up. They're all happy, just like the script says. Hey, you're back. Yay. But these guys are blank faced. What's going on? And then, uh oh, tight close up. Dun, dun, dun. And then page three was a splash page. The fight breaks out, yo. Dun, 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 dun. The door may lose, blah, 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 blah. Uh, this seems to be a lot more detailed of the plots that Stan wrote, Jack, draw Dr. Doom. Well, yeah, I mean, things definitely evolved. But these were the type of plots that I got from Mark Grunewald when I did Quasar. I still actually have those printed out plots somewhere, uh, along with the photocopies of my pencils, the Quasar. That was way before computers and stuff and emailing the plots. But, uh, but so anyhow, the fight breaks out. Splash page with the guards and the door melange, whatever, fighting, uh, taking out the crew from the airport. Back here, we just see uh, Rose's feet and Ghost Panther's legs um, because they're not fighting. Their hands are still tied. But there's a big fight going on. So uh, try to get that across nicely. Uh, get a nice shot of one of the, the Malu, whatever women here fighting oh yeah they're bald they're busty they're badass boobages and clevengers bow chicka wow wow you know when i see shots like this uh i often think to myself <laughs> that's literally what i thought to myself drawing this uh and then I want to do a nice close-up of the guards falling to the ground, different ones, get some perspective in here. Cool cropping, boom, hitting the ground. Ouch, ow, my head. Ew. Crunch. Oh, back of the head. That's got to hurt. Boom. So, guys all knocked out. What's up? What about? Uh, how do you construct a page like this? Figure out characters separately and place them or figure it out as a whole from the initial layout. This was figured out as a whole, baby. I got out my rough scrap piece of paper and uh, figured out the perspective I was going to do and just started scribbling about. As you can see, it's a circular composition. So you follow this guy's shoulder around this way. This guy's punching over this way, but still we got this guy arcing this way, coming around to this guy whose arm arcs around like that. Uh, leading us to this body here of this warrior fighting whose body arcs around. She's punching down this way. So it's a nice circular composition, uh, kind of focusing on uh, the fighting of the people right here in the center. So I hope that helps. Looks awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, anyhow, move, and then, of course, we're read down. So I want to give the feeling of all these guys dropping to the ground like that. So next page, uh, let's see what the plot said for this page. It's so ridiculously balanced. I love it. Thank you very much. Well, go get the back issues still available. So now, and this did say splash page, the blank face guard suddenly attacked the members of the airfield. It's completely unexpected. Please leave room for title and credits. I did that, but I also added that bottom panel to show the guards getting knocked out and dropping to the ground. Once again, it's a plot. I'm allowed to do that. Um, I do want to see something real quick. Let's go back. Yeah, there's total room right here for the credits and stuff in this dead space right here. So that's probably where they went. I don't remember exactly, but that's where I wanted them to go. So anyhow, uh, page four. Uh, the plot just says, once the airfield is out of commission, the guards suddenly drop to the ground. So once again, I kind of move that to page three, because on page four, we got Jean Grey steps out of the plane, impressed by how well that went. She hasn't controlled that many people once in a, at once in a while. Ooh, Jean Grey was controlling all the guards. It was exhilarating. Scott smiles at her and the other X-Men exit the plane, and he gives the list of the other X-Men. So here we go. I still included a, a long shot just to kind of reestablish everything. Uh, so on the previous page, you had the crew drop to the ground. On this page, we start with 
the guards dropping to the ground. So because Jean Grey is done with her mind control, so they drop. So I did that in a long shot. Then we pull the camera back and we see Jean Grey and all her sexiness, gloriousness right here saying, yeah, I did my business. I did my job. Cyclops is like, good work, honey buns. Good work. You know, so we, we get that nice big shot on the page of them coming out of the plane. Uh, this was a fun shot to do. And then Cyclops just smiling. And then the rest of the rest of the X-Men exit the plane. We got little row here, Ghost Panther here. Uh, good time, good tier Cyclops costume. This was X-Men Forever, man. This was the X-Men that I loved from basically the 90s. So I got to draw all these great costumes from that time period. So we see the other X-Men, Sabretooth, uh, Kitty Pride, uh, uh, oh man, the Multiple Man here. Uh, this is way before, oh, uh, why did you draw Cyclops visor small? It looks great. Uh, that was the reference I got. This is the reference I got for his uh, visor. So that is, uh, that's the reference I was given. Uh, this is before that three-way, you sicko. So anyhow, they the rest of the X-Men exit the back of the, the plane. And they uncuff our, uh, our characters, Row and Ghost Panther. We got Sabretooth back there. Uh, what's her face? Uh, oh man, what's her name here? Uh, Mystique. Oh, that's Gambit. That's right. Gambit right here. Cyclops, Gene looking on. Man, I love working from a plot. Good morning, Stat Zero. How are you? We're just looking at X Men Forever pencils uh, right before. These stories take place, uh, X Men Forever kind of takes place from the stuff from the 90s. So, oops, uh, the classic blue costume. Yes. Damn it. Let me see. And then, uh, we got to a nice group shot here showing everybody with ghost Panther saying, all right, guys, now that we're here. We need to wreak some havoc. Uh, I love drawing Cyclops. Love, love, love drawing Cyclops. This this panel was fun. Nice big shot. Of, nice cool shot of Cyclops right here looking tough. So uh, that, that was fun. Uh, Mystique bends down to grab an ID badge off of one of the passed out, uh, knocked out, whatever. Uh, guards and then they're like all right let's get going guys we got some havoc to wreak once again leaving ample room for word balloons always got to leave the room for the word balloon since this isn't a full script uh yes i believe it was this was his own yes yeah, this was him picking up from stuff in the 90s if i remember correctly so leaving room for word balloons up here. Look at all this beautiful space right here. Beautiful word balloon space, word balloon space. Ghost Panther's like, not so quick. You ain't going nowhere, young lady. What? She's like, I'm not a kid. I can do whatever I want. Ghost Panther's like, no, I don't, I don't think so. Uh, next page. Uh, page six. Let's see what the plot said. This looks like a flashback because I did the, the, the you know, this is a flashback with the round uh, panel borders. So let's see. Page six. Flashback, told you, to Genosha previous night. We're at a dockside warehouse that the Ghost Panther uses as a safe house. Inside, the assembled X-Men minus Sabretooth and Remy. And the Morlocks have defeated Wakandan guards tied up. Apparently the battle was finished pretty quickly after their queen retreated. 
Gene side probes the guards and discovers that they have no real info on Perfect Storm's larger plans. The Dora Milouge, Milage, whatever, on the other hand, are ripe with details, but they have some intense mental training, so their psychs are more heavily guarded. Scott orders Gene and Kurt to do whatever it takes to extract valuable information from them. He wants to know the weak points of the palace perimeter, patrol schedules, and more. So here we go. Panel one, the docks. So we know we're at the docks because, look, there's water. There's the edge of the dock. There's a thing to tie up a ship and a warehouse in the city of Genosha in the background. That's right. 561 backers strong. First man two. 39 backers to go to 600. I know we can do it. Let's get the 600 backers, guy. 39, that's it. You want great storytelling like this, but with First Man, you know how to do it. Does Fraggy leave room for word balloons or is John just busting his balls? Uh, it's the Dora Maloub. Oh, uh, yes. No, Fraggy leaves room for word balloons. Totally. Um. It's on how you compose the main important elements in a panel. You can fill up all the space. I mean, this, this first panel right here, obviously there's not tons of word balloons going on. There's lots of space, but in the sky, it's a night sky. I could have went in and drew tons of clouds and all this detail in the sky. One, I didn't because it's a clear sky, so no, no clouds. But if you look at the second panel, I've got all the space filled up, you know, with detail where the, the shot is framed nicely. We're looking down through a light and some pipes into this warehouse. You've got the X-Men clustered around the defeated guards and door Maluge. Um, so we're showing the characters here, but there's lots of room for word balloons. But then in this panel, I focus on Jean doing her, uh, mean Jean, doing her, uh, mind probe stuff. Now, could I have drawn a background here in this panel behind Jean's head of, uh, where's Jean? Jean's right here. Could I have drawn a background here? Part of Cyclops shoulder, maybe part of the wall. Yeah, I could have, but I knew there'd be dialogue there and it just doesn't need it. So I didn't draw it. You know, that's the thing. I, I like to think when are backgrounds necessary and when aren't they? This gives you room to breathe. I established everything in this first panel. There wasn't a need for more backgrounds in this panel. So uh, I just focus on Jean. And then, of course, the camera pulls back as she's telling Cyclops, hey, Cyclops, we're good to go here, you know, whatever. But look, I drew the background. And there's lots of room for word balloons. So, you know, this was fun, of course, getting in my Cyclops action. He's like, okay, Gene, thanks for doing what you do. She's like, no problem, Cyclops. You got this, babe. And uh, what's his face here? Uh, Kurt is like, or no, that's not Kurt. Who is this? Damn it. Let me see. Is that Kurt? Wait. If that's Kurt, that can't be Kurt. Is that Nightcrawler? If that's Nightcrawler, I made a boo-boo because I drew him with four fingers. That's not Nightcrawler. Who is that? Let me see. Uh, when a Claremont plot, are you more conscious of leaving more space than normal? Uh, yeah, a little bit. I mean, I kind of go by the, the rule of when you're drawing a comic book panel, try to keep in mind that two-thirds of the panel is yours. And one third of the panel is the writers. So that's kind of the rule I keep in mind, the two third, one third rule. Dialogue really shouldn't take up more than one third of a panel. So that's what I try to keep in mind. Uh, let me look at this plot. Uh, Scott orders Gene and Kurt to do whatever it takes. Oh, shit. I drew Kurt with. I drew Kurt with four fingers. Kurt only has two. I wonder if the book was printed that way or if they, or if the anchor might've changed it. I honestly don't know. Or maybe there was a reason. God, I don't recall. That's really weird. Um, oopsie. Oopsie. Uh, editorial hopefully would have caught that. Uh, 
now I need to go look at something here. Uh, let's see if we can. Uh... Oops. Oh, that's fine. What do I care? Excuse me as I do a quick uh, search for something here. Uh, I just want to see if that was fixed, because if not, I made a boo-boo. Unless there, for some reason Kurt had uh, four fingers, but I don't think he did. So let me see, let me see. Oh, that's not the right series. I'm looking through the wrong series. Oop, that's not the right series. Oh, this is the right one. Let me see. Oh, that's odd. Oh, wait. So here we are. Here we are. Uh, look at this. I said, here's colors and inks. Look at that. This is where I wanted the credits to go, right down here. Nothing important down here on the splash page. And uh, there it is. Strange Days. Chris Claremont, Andy Smith, and then everybody else. Oh, my buddy Will Quintana from uh, CrossGen colored it. Great color work here. Oh, yeah, Kurt. See, once again, look at this. Plenty of room for word balloons. Remember, I left this blank, right, in the pencils because of word balloons, right? Here you go. Look at all this. Filled up that space. Could have drawn backgrounds back there, but they'd be covered, so I did not. Uh, Kurt, for some reason, I think is... Uh, He's undercover or something. I know he can, he has that thing to change his form or whatever you call it. So he had four fingers. Uh, I know I referenced this from something. So that makes total sense. So there you go. Uh, is that Rogue? Uh, uh, I don't think Rogue was in this. Fragger wouldn't hate all the room. Fragger knows how much room he needs to leave in his book for Smoking Wraith, by the way. Welcome to the show. Remember, everybody, subscribe to the channel. Share the channel. Let's get to that magic thousand, uh, less than 200 away. Uh, so anyhow, uh, there's that page. Moving on. More flashback action here. Another part of the warehouse. As Kitty Pride is talking to Ghost Panther and Rose just kind of sitting here. Drew a little rat in the foreground in the shadow. See that rat? Mm, rats are always in warehouses. She's like, but Ghost Panther. And then uh, I like playing with lighting. This is a, a warehouse, so it's a dark area. Here you can see I left word balloon room up top here and down here. We'll get to the printed book to see how much... Uh, of it was taken up. And then we get the nice shot of Gambit and Sabretooth coming onto the scene. Look at me drawing Sabretooth. My Sabretooth looks like a man, yo. My Sabretooth don't mess around. He's here to kick some ass, yo. Sabretooth in the, his house. Uh, this was fun, drawing Sabretooth. Like this. Good times. Good times. Uh, I wish Gambit was in costume, but he was in a, a black suit. Not much I can do there. Let's go to the printed book and see how uh, how this, this looks. Look at that. Left plenty of room. I think Chris had fun uh, scripting this. 
because he was like, look at this artist, knows how to lay out panels to leave lots of room for dialogue, beautiful stuff here. And then we uh, we get to a nice shot here of Kitty Pride talking to uh, to what's his face, Ghost Panther. And then boom, look at that. Nothing important covered up with dialogue because I know how to lay out panels. Yes, I do. Uh, let's not spoil the next page till we see it here. Uh, so then we got the, of course, hero shot. I'm going to solo this so you guys can see it better. There you go. Nobody needs to see my face when you guys can go, hey, let's see the artwork, Smith. So we got Cyclops giving his let's pump everybody up speech that Cyclops does. So here he is pumping everybody up saying, all right, guys. Oh, but his brother Havoc. Oh, his brother Havoc isn't having any of this. He's like, no, no, no. You guys need to listen to me. I don't think this is a good plan at all. Ghost Panther's like, shh, hush, little baby, don't say a word. Mama's gonna bring you a mockingbird. That's because this story took place in the 90s, baby. Hush, little baby, don't say a word. Mama's gonna bring you a mockingbird cyclops looking tough back here saying that's right talk my brother down another cool shot of cyclops here oh man i enjoy drawing these characters wouldn't it be nice if the x-men looked this cool now i know but i'm on to bigger and better things called first man jeremy burt's in the house hello cyclops is like shut your mouth Boom! Listen up, guys. This is what we're doing. Another pump them up speech. Pump it up. Pump it up. Pump up the jam. J jam. I'm not going to look at every page as comparison, but I'm curious because I haven't looked at this actual book in a while. Oops. There we go. Look at that. Plenty of dialogue room here. Nothing covered up. Look at this. He's whining. Nothing really covered. Chris Claremont and I work make a great, great team. Oh, look at that. Big speech here. It's like I wrote the book on drawing dynamic comics. Oh, wait, I did. You know, I want to see something again. I love seeing blacks filled in on a page. Oh, yeah, look at that. These juicy blacks filled in and stuff. Good times. Good times were made kind of special. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Back to the present. Panel one. This dude. He's got his ID. He's like, yo, what's up? Oh, what's going on here? Dun, dun, dun. <sighs> The guards, I love Wakanda. I would like to live there because I would let these guards take me prisoner. Because uh, look at him. Inside the palace, here he comes. He's going in the door. You've got the door here as he walks inside. Nice little background stuff here. Elements. Walks past a couple dudes. He's like, ha, ha, ha. They don't know who this is. Now he's going to walk into some shadows. Ooh, look at that, shadows. Oh, he comes out of the shadows. Look at that. One background divided into two panels. He goes into the shadows as the dude, comes back out as Perfect Storm. Bow, chicka, wow, wow. You know it. Uh, good stuff, Andy. Makes me sad how far the X-Men have fallen. Write your leaders at Marvel and say, look at this. This is beautiful stuff. Hello, Storm. So, yes, this must be Mystique. Shapeshifter walks by. And then 
oh, they have fine art. And, and you know, you got the door Malou's chick here bowing down to Storm. Storm's like, that's right. Bow down. Bow chicka wow wow. Ka chicka chicka wow wow. Bow down to me. Some sculptures in the back here. This palace, don't mess around. Uh, we like to call those boobages and cleavengers. Uh, maybe you don't know that. Two thumbs up on Facebook. If you're watching on Facebook, please subscribe to the channel on YouTube and then watch it wherever you would like. But subscribing to the YouTube channel is a must. So please do that. Uh, damn it. Now I just want to see how this panel turned out in color. So I'm not going to do this for every page. I swear I won't. Wakanda. Oh, I had to change it. That's right. I forgot. She wasn't in costume. Uh, so the editorial called me up and said, yo, Smith, she's not supposed to be in her storm costume. Put her in this instead. So I had to uh, do a patch for this. So that's how she actually looks. Even better. Side boob. Nice. Everybody like side boob. I know I do. Yeah, so I had to change it. Let's see. Yep, don't have it. So I had to change it in this panel too. So she walks into a room and this guy's like, oh, Madam Storm. Uh, it's just supposed to be some funky, funky fly control room that she walks into. He's like, well, hello. Man, that face came out pretty cool. He's got the dreadlocks going on. She's like, what do you think you're doing? Once again, I know she's blathering on. Leave that room for Mr. Claremont to do his job. Uh, he's got a gun on the table. What's the gun for? I wonder. Hmm. Foreshadowing, maybe. Maybe a little foreshadowing. She's like, oh, did you catch me? I'm Mystique. Yo, wow, 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 wow. He pulls the gun on her. It's like, that's okay. I'm Mystique. No problem. You caught me. Busted. And then boom, Nightcrawler from behind, bamf, bamfing in. And then female Nightcrawler here, whatever her name is, going, I got you, you got me, boop, 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 D, 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 bamf, Whoosh. getting some perspective going on. Very, uh, very cool. Look at, look at Nightcrawler. That's right. Chekhov's gun. I should have done that. I should have swiped the gun from like Star Trek for uh, people that really pay attention. She's like, I'm going to choke you out. Give me that gun. He's getting choked out. Poor guy. What did he do to deserve this? And then I, Maybe that's not Nightcrawler. I got no idea because, oh, wait, who is this? I, oh, man, I don't know what's going on with this story, but takes a glove off doing rogue type powers here. And then the dude passes out. I honestly can't remember the story for crap. <sighs> Nice little close-up, some hand, hands clicking away. See, I love stuff like this. Page 14, let's see. Plot-wise, what do we got going on on page 14? Back in the Wakanda Royal Palette. Oh, wait, that's not, wait. Establishing shot, shield, helicarrier. What the hell's going on? Oh, here it is, page 12. Did I say page 14? No, page 12, issue 14. I'm a dummy, I'm...
uh, thank you very much. So anyhow, uh, the script said on page 12, Kurt walks over to the command console, types in furiously. He tells Rogan Kurt exactly what he's doing, shutting down the internal external defense grid, looping the feeds on all this monitoring systems, blah, blah, blah. So here we go. He walks over to it, typing furiously. I love doing shots like this. He's typing furiously, move the camera, pull back. He's like, this is what I'm doing. Blah, blah, blah. Huh? What's that, ladies? Mystique is like, whoa, wait a second. Ooh, bow, chicka, wow, wow. Ka chicka, chicka, wow, wow. She's like, what? Travis made me, you, well, good. I'm glad. I'm glad you're here, BDF. Please subscribe to the channel. She's like, just kidding. Ha, ha, ha. He's like, oh, why would you make fun of me like that? Oh. See, you got to tell a story with body language and stuff like that. And then this is the same panel, right? Mystique is in this panel, but to make it two separate actions, I gave Mystique her own panel border. So she's saying this to Kurt, and then Mystique's like, but wait, there's more in her own separate panel. And then they go walking off out of the uh out of the control room, and she's like, That's nice. You kids go have fun. You kids go have fun. Oh, the shield her helicarrier. Here we go. Got to draw the shield helicarrier. Hella awesome. Over uh, uh, somewhere. I don't know where they're over. I can't remember. I don't feel like looking at the plot again. Um, You got the, the lights and stuff in the sea below. We cut inside. This chick is talking to, I don't know, some people. She's like, listen here, buddy. And then, oh, somebody walks in. I can't remember who this is. But of course, in any good uh, office, you have liquor in the background. So. Oh, had to do a patch. She, she was supposed to be wearing shield gear. So look at that. Had to do a patch. Had to put her in some shield attire. So I did that. See? And then we cut to uh, the page of Sabretooth and Gambit just kicked the ass of some guards. And they're at the end of this hallway. And uh, Gambit's doing his thing. So here we got the nice establishing shot. Zoom in over. And uh, you got the guards being like, oh, man, we just got our butts kicked by two dudes. Well, when one of them saber tooth, you know that's going to happen. Gambit's like, I got this control panel thing. Don't worry about it. I got the control panel all figured out. Sabretooth's like, what is taking you so long? Jeez Louise, man, come on. <sighs> What is taking you guys so long to get in here? Hurry up. Kitty's like, I'm sorry. Are you guys having problems? Because I can just uh, phase it and do it. And they're like, oh, sure. Girl power. Girl power. And then we cut in. The door opens. Swing. Look at this heavy duty door right here. And then we come down, down shot as they walk in. Sabretooth looking all buff and badass. And then I was told to draw an armory. So this is the armory of uh in Wakanda with all these different weapons I was told to draw. So I had to draw guns and swords and all this stuff 
so to make this panel really lead into this panel, check this out, yo. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, check this out. So this, this is a down shot in panel two, but to really pull the eye down into this panel, I use the perspective point uh, for this one point perspective as the same perspective point for the down shot in this panel too. So they literally pull you down into this and your eye just takes in all the weapons and stuff that I drew. I was just making up shit left and right. They're like, just make up some weapons. I'm like, okie dokie. So if any of these guns appear in a movie, well, you know, they swiped them from my weapons room that I drew here. Sabretooth's like, God damn, look at all them guns. What the jeez louise. Tons of guns. Did some backlighting on them here. They're like, damn, this place is armed up, ready to go. Weapons room is killer. Thank you very much. Very nice. Thank you. Or wow, nice. And so is Andy Sabretooth. Oh, hyper guys, you, you're so kind. I appreciate that. Let's keep going. Then we cut back to another room where Miss, uh, I can't remember who this character is. Uh, Polaris, I believe. Got some more guards knocked out in here. Dropping down to uh, Havoc and Cyclops. And Havoc is like, I got this. Hacking in. Havoc is a hacker as well. Don't know if you guys knew that. Genuine Comics. Holy hell, this comic looks awesome. I have to find it somewhere. I'm sure you can find it in dollar boxes everywhere. It's X-Men Forever 14. Tomorrow we'll go through issue 15. So he's doing a little hacking on these uh, controls and stuff. Once again, no reference, just making stuff up, which is always fun. Making up different things in a room. I did my Photoshop here. Just put some BS stuff up on the screen. He's like, yeah, look what I found. Cyclops is like, yes, you are good at your job. Let's press a button. That's the sound effect I hear in my head. Then we cut over to the shield helicarrier, Nick Fury. Nick Fury's like, damn it. They just sent over all this stuff. Fury's like, all right, guys, we got some stuff to do. Uh, this was before Samuel Jackson, Nick Fury, remember, 90s. So he's like, guys, get on this. So, of course, we got the people uh, working at their computer consoles. This, uh, I have found some com amazing comics in a dollar bin. That amazing Cubert Ragman cover cost me a buck. Ragman by Cubert is awesome. So anyway, I, I get to draw a cool big shot of Nick Fury bitching at his guys going, get on it now. He's like, sir, yes, sir. She, I don't know if I made these costumes up. I have no idea. But it was fun. She's like, sir, we've got some intel coming in. This guy's back here is like, oh, snack. I better get to get to some business. As she comes in, Nick Fury's like, what? This was fun to draw. Man, I'm glad I'm looking at this. Pumps me up to want to draw first, man. Nick Fury's like, guys, guys, I got some intel for you guys. Oh, we're rolling now. Only a few pages left. Back to uh, inside the control room. Cyclops doesn't look happy for some reason. I don't know what the hell's going on, but Cyclops looks sad. From off panel, Gene's like, Guys, boys, boys, we need to talk, boys. What's up, Gene? <sighs> you know, I try to draw, draw a nice figure shot whenever I can. Uh, that man is playing Lady Gaga. Oh, oh, that man's playing Galaga. Boom! 
boom, Peyton Holden with the callback. That's right. On a previous page, Nick Fury's like, that dude's playing Galaga. Actually, the chick running up is like, that dude's playing Galaga. So here we go. Gene is like, guys, I don't know what's wrong. I'm having issues. So, you know, tried to draw a nice shot of Jean. Can't really draw her sexy when she's, you know, kind of whimpering for some reason. <gasps> What's wrong, Jean? Cyclops is comforting her. Don't worry, Jean, babe. We got this. Hyper Kaiju's like, you want to see more goodness like this? Go back, first man to learning curve. Yes, go back it now to get this great artwork, but with first man. Boom. Hello, X-Men. Uh, what are your influence for First Man? Claremont, DeFalco, uh, more Jim Starlin, uh, cosmic stuff, and just old school Marvel in general, Silver Age type comics, fun superhero adventure, I would say. So let's see what happens on the next page. Oh, boom. From out of nowhere. Remember, she was guarding the door. Polaris. Uh, I love all the acting on your character's hands. No one ever just has a stock hand. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Hands are very uh, expressive. I just found the trade paperback of X-Men Forever with your run in it about to place the order. This is when X-Men were so cool. Thank you very much. I bet that book doesn't cost much either. So anyhow, uh-oh, blast. Havoc, Cyclops, Gene are like, what the hell's going on? Polaris is like, ah, as she comes flying in, silhouette. Who the hell did that? <sighs> Havoc is like, no, that's my woman. Oh, she got all smashed into a console. Havoc's like not having any of it. Oh, no, it was Storm. Storm's like, no, I will not have this. We don't know who's back there, but somebody's back there as Storm walks in. Guys, I was doing this job thinking after I get this job turned in, I am going to be working on a monthly book at Marvel. And let me tell you, after I turned in these two issues, I was not working on a monthly book at Marvel. So uh, their loss, uh, this is what I like to call my ode to Neil Adams, uh, Cyclops here getting that hand in the foreground like Neil Adams would do. My ode to Neil Adams going, boom, yo. Uh, Dick Giordano said, if you can do, do hands and feet, you have a future in comics. If you can do hands, feet, and faces, here's the thing. Most people, when we talk to other people, we look at their hands and we look at their faces. So if you draw shitty hands and shitty faces, most people will be able to call you out because that's what we're used to looking at. But most people don't know shit about anatomy and stuff. So you can get away with, uh, with you know, weak anatomy and clothing because people aren't as uh, clued in on that stuff. Dude, you nailed it. Uh, that Cyclops reminds me of Neil Adams. That's what I was going for. The real Steve Dye loved the way his hand and elbow bust out of the panel. Thank you very much. Just try, you know, I try to get a little, uh, I try to get a little, um, little designy with my panels and stuff when I do this. And uh, I was going for a Neil Adams vibe here. And uh, I think it worked. Is that why Larson always draws hands enormous? It could be. So are most people autistic? No. And my daughter's on the spectrum, actually. And, uh, you know, no, most people aren't. It's just most people talk with their hands. And when we talk to people, we usually try to look them in the eye. So anyhow, then we get we're coming to the end of the book, page 19. That means the next page is a splash page. We've got a close up of Storm saying, oh, I didn't come alone. I brought some friends. Who could this guy be back here in silhouette? I don't know. What character in the Marvel comics has uh, feathers off the side of his head? Could it be? Let's see. Captain America. The book ended on a two-page spread. Page 20, 21. Wait, I don't think this is the last page. I think it was a 23-page book. 
two page spread storms like i got a little help from my friends i got a little help from my friends and oh yeah i got to draw classic scarlet witch quick silver hawkeye spider woman the vision my man captain america and thor and look at the size difference between all these characters Awesome shot. Thank you very much. Those are some fine looking ladies. Thank you. Gah! I was wrong again. Spreads like that get you excited to read the next issue. Scarred up Storm. Is it Storm? I don't know. We'll have to find out next issue. Uh, love this shot. I believe I own this two page spread still. Love this shot of Captain America right here. Looking boss. This is my Captain America. No BS, my Thor. Well, I take it back. I prefer the Thor without this face piece. But hey, still a classic Thor. Breaking it down, yo. Captain America and stuff. These are my versions of these characters. So, uh, yeah. This was fun. And once again... Don't draw anything important down the middle of a spread. This is the middle. No fake, nothing important down the middle. Uh, fantastic double page spread. Thank you very much. Good size differential. Thank you. Ink it, ink it. It's already inked. I don't need to ink it. It's already inked. Uh, how do you choke an Italian? I hear a joke. Boss stuff. Thank you very much. If DC owned Cap, I guess he'd end up being Captain Better tomorrow. He would be, but this is Captain Freaking America um, right here, baby. I think there is another page after this. I don't know. I don't recall. Oh, yes. Page 22. Wait. Oh, yeah. Page 22. <sighs> You know, one of my favorite shots on this page is actually this first panel. Spider-Woman nearly got the spine. Oh. Oh, Danky Frankie says, why nothing important down the middle? Because if it's a comic book, it's fine because you can lay a comic book flat. If it's in a trade paperback, you can't open up a trade paperback and lie it flat. So you'll lose artwork in the middle. So you don't draw anything important in the middle. You tie their hands behind their back. Oh, got it. Uh, you got paid to draw this, you lucky bastard. I am. What's up, writer? Fix problems. I hope you subscribe to my channel. Uh, so anyhow, right here, I love this down shot. We got four characters. We don't need to know who they are in this first panel. Walking towards a hut. We zoom in a little tighter. We see it's Row. Uh, I can't remember. Caliban. I can't remember who's in the hood. I, no, that's not Caliban. I, oh, I can't remember her name. Uh, Ghost Panther. And then we walk in, we get in tighter. Ghost Panther's like, I'm about to take my helmet off. Welcome to the jungle. Nah, 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 nah. It's Storm underneath the helmet with her mohawk. What? That's not the real Storm. Dun, dun, dun. And then we see Dr. Dr. Strange. I say, Dr. I got to draw Dr. Strange, yo. Sitting all cross-legged like he would be doing. Dr. Strange sitting cross-legged. Yeah. Right here. His cape fluttering on the ground. <coughs> Excuse me. It's got candles lit. It's got some books. It's got a pig's foot in a jar. Some small shrunken heads hanging down. Uh, you know, this was a fun panel to draw right there. Let me tell you guys, drawing classic Doctor Strange. Oh, Doctor Strange goodness. Thank you very much. Uh, that Doctor Strange, sorry. Is great, thank you. How did Storm squeeze her boobages in the armor? Just a casual collection, that's all. 
Um, because boobage is mush. I have some X Men Forever. I'll need to see if I have these. What ish? 14. And tomorrow we will look at 15. Pig's foot in a jar. Is he making soup? He might be. So this is the cliffhanger to the final, to the issue. Uh, so next issue, we get to see what happens in the book. Dun, dun, dun. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, that's new. I can do a little uh, inset panel on myself down here. Sweet. That is new to StreamYard. Beautiful, beautiful. Let's see what, hold on here. Huh. Trying to see. Oh, there's that. So there you go, guys. This is the final countdown. Do -do -do -do. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, guys, tomorrow, issue 15. Let's see what happens in issue 15. Guys, please go back. First Man 2 Learning Curve. Uh, link is in the description below. The link has been posted a couple times here by my beautiful wrenches, Stat Zero Hyper Kaiju. Uh, please, please go back, First Man 2 Learning Curve. Uh, you're like, what the hell is First Man 2 Learning Curve? I don't even know what you're talking about. It is my book. That's what it is. You can get great things like a t-shirt. Go get yourself a First Man t-shirt to show you're a First Maniac. And uh, if you're digging this art, you'll want to pick up the tier that has First Man 2 and Andy Smith, Black Book, The Art of Andy Smith, 112-page hardcover featuring glorious art over my 30-year career. So you'll want to get that tier for sure. And you can, of course, do an add-on for um, Volume 1 if you missed it. Thank you so much, Hyper Kaiju, uh, Hyper Kaiju. Thank you for posting. I drew two issues, 14 and 15. Uh, I was going to draw more, but they canceled the book with issue 16. Uh, these kind of behind the scenes, how I did it streams are the best. Hope you keep doing them. I will keep doing them, Steve. Uh, you know I will. Um, great stream. Thank you for sharing. I will always share with you guys. It is by y'all. Better late than never. Back to book now. It is in demand. And guys, issue 15 tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. And until tomorrow, I'm bringing this back, yo. I'm bringing this back.